All right, I have here uh, an image that I took in Rome, and this is from the Roman Colise uh, or Roman Forum rather. And I think this is going to be a great image to use with Topaz Remask. The reason being is that um, I have two different images here, the same image shot at different uh, exposures. I wanted to get all the detail in the sky in this image. So I wanted to get all the details in the clouds without having any blown highlights. And then I also took this image of the actual structure itself here at the Roman Forum. But in this image, you can see that the, that the clouds are blown out. So we need to deal with this. And I want to remove the sky from this image and drop in the sky from this darker image. So we're going to use uh, Topaz Remask to do that. First thing we need to do, I noticed uh, just from switching through these images that they look like they're off a couple pixels. So I'm going to highlight those both and go over to Auto Align Layers. See if that'll fix it real quick. And it did. So now I just need to crop, make sure that this is fixed. Anytime I'm cropping out some of these pixels from aligning, I just usually pull down a little bit off of each corner and hit enter and that should get us right where we need to be. Yeah. All right. First thing we need to do is highlight this top layer and add a mask to it. You have to add a mask to the image before taking it into Topaz Remask. Otherwise, when you use the program, it will simply create, um, or it'll simply delete the sky from this image without a mask, that way, um, or delete the structure rather. And we couldn't go back and mask in anywhere where we need to do like some fine tuning or anything like that. There's no way to go back. And that's the whole point of using masks in Photoshop is that you can take away part of an image and then add it back later if you need to adjust it. So we add a mask and then uh, come up here to filters and topaz and remask three. <clears throat> and you're immediately greeted with this green tinted image. And it might throw you off at first, but the whole premise of Topaz Remask is um, these three brushes over here. So you have a keep brush, which everything is green. Everything that is green in the image is going to stay in the image. Everything that is red is going to be dropped from the image. And this blue one over here is a compute brush. And you simply draw along the line that you want to compute the mask around. So you're actually letting Topaz say, okay, based on this line that you've drawn, we're gonna go in here using our algorithms and um, best compute that mask based off of that line. So there are certain images that this is gonna work great with. There's others that it might not work so well with. Um, it just depends, but I think it's gonna work good with this one. So let's um, zoom in here. I'm gonna hit Command Plus, just like you would in Photoshop. I can hit spacebar and drag around, or I can come up here to the loop uh, view and use that as well. So I'm going to grab the compute brush, and I'm just going to start drawing along the border of this structure. If you want to make the brush larger, you can use the brackets just like in Photoshop. <clears throat> Although the smaller the brush, the more accurate your mask will be. For the purpose of this, I'm going to use one somewhat larger <clears throat> because mainly it allows me to go on the edge of the mask quicker without having to be quite as precise. All right, so I have a little bit of work to do here, so I'm just going to stop talking so I can speed this up a little bit. All right, so now that I'm done with the major part of it, uh, drawing the line all along the edge of, of this, um, this arch here, now I want to come into the middle of the arch and do a little bit of uh, finer work here. So I'm going to get this initial edge here. And you just want to make sure that you have both things selected on the line there, both the arch and the sky, or whatever you want to remove. So now I'm getting into these um, these trees and shrubs and whatnot and you kind of just have to do this however you you feel is best i'm going to go along the general edge 
of these bushes and come back up here. And I want it to compute through this tree. So we're just gonna see how it does there. So I have that part done. I need to come over here. There's a tiny little part here that I wanna bring in. Okay. <clears throat> and that should all be fine right there. So I'm gonna zoom out. And this is my uh, mask so far. I noticed that I missed a spot over here. So I want to be sure to grab that, come down here and jump across there. Okay. All right, so now that I have that done, I want to keep the sky and I want to remove the, um, the arch here. So I'm going to go down to the fills here and you have these paint buckets. Grab the red paint bucket and sample in here. And if you've drawn a line that connects all the way across the image, anything below that line will turn red. And since I also drew lines in here, it will exclude those as well. <clears throat> all right, so this looks good from here. Just go over to Compute Mask, select that. And there's my mask. That looks pretty, pretty dang good right off the bat. And if you zoom in, really close here, you might see some imperfections here. So what you can do is go over to your um, single selection brushes, or I'm sorry, brush, not eyedropper. <laughs> so I can say I wanna keep this, and as you draw through that where you see some artifacts, it's gonna use the information that you paint over to refine the mask and make it look better which is really a cool feature. You can see some of the gray in the structure here. So I can grab my, um, my red brush and paint through that. You can spend as much or as little time as you want on this, but obviously the more time you spend on it, the better results you're gonna get. So I'll come down here and see how it did with the trees. And it did a pretty, pretty amazing job on that as well. So with my keep brush selected, I'm gonna paint through here and you'll see those artifacts kind of start to disappear. Looks good. And I think we'll use that as a stopping point just because uh, I don't wanna to spend too much time here. So I'll hit Command Zero to zoom out and hit OK to go back to Photoshop. And here's the mask. <clears throat> it's really a fast program just like uh, all the rest of their programs and if I disable this mask you can see the original image and I'll turn the mask back on and now you can see this one so it's done a really good job right off the bat and if I think this is a little bit too bright uh, what I could do here is duplicate this layer and then invert this mask and then I can play with the opacity of this mask to adjust the brightness of the, of the structure here. So get it, you know, where I want it, where I think it looks best, probably right there. And that's basically how Topaz Remask works. So I can uh, come down to this bottom layer and option click this. So this is what we would have if we just took an image straight out of the camera and exposed for the, uh, the arch here at the Roman form. And if I turn back on the other layer, this is bringing in the sky with help from uh, Topaz Remask. Hope you uh, learned something here. It's a great program, has uh, so many uses, and uh, thanks for watching.